All right, this one's called Mostly Filler. Failing to understand story pacing in ReZero. And here's the best part. The people who need to watch this to understand that the 90 minute the cinematic film of an episode one, right? How it was such good exposition and setup and just setting up the stage so that the pop off moments will matter more if you're more immersed and understand more of the story. The people who need to understand this will never click on videos like this, you know? The monkeys, the average consumer does not give a fuck. So we're just basically preaching to the choir, but hey, I'm here to make a dollar. A spiritual analysis, give it to me. So in this video, I want to talk about ReZero season three, because okay. I didn't talk about the initial movie length episode. And I have a very, very large criticism for ReZero. It oh. is a very big criticism. He's I'm capping. Totally not over exaggerating. He's trolling. Video. My criticism is Subaru needs to take off his jacket. <laughs> I know, I know you're like, what? Unironically, I feel like there could be such a hype moment when Subaru does take off his jacket. Like, you know how when people get serious, they like take off a layer of clothing and it's like, now I'll try, right? I think there could be a really cool power fantasy like shonen moment when Subaru actually takes off his jacket to get real. What? You want him to strip? Yes, I want him to strip. God damn it, that first part of the first episode was like, my god boy, you, you're traumatizing me with that jacket on. He's running around, cracking the whip, and then he's sweating, and I'm like traumatized. I'm like, dude, you're reminding me of my karate practice when I have like three layers of clothes on because it's winter, and then I'm sweating like an absolute bucket load at the end of it, and I'm like, god, I wish I took off the singlet, or at least the shirt. Okay. And it's like, it just reminded me of that. I'm like, Subaru. Just take off some clothes. Yes, we've got some amazing assets from Amelia. I don't mind seeing some assets from Subaru. <laughs> I know. We've got assets for days in this series. But it's just one of those I just wanted to find a, throw a fun jab because when I did watch it, I kind of looked at it and I'm like, oh my god, just take the tracksuit off if you're going to train. Like, I get that jacket is durable. And it's also, I when I mentioned about it online, people were like, he's really going into the jacket, huh? Like, damn, I thought it'd be a quick joke, then we're gonna move on. He's still fucking talking about the jacket and the, how sweaty it is during the training. It must be such a core memory back in the day when he was sweating so hard training. Oh, but it's his iconic outfit. And I'm like, dude, we all know who Subaru is. We don't need the jacket to be the thing that, oh, who is he? He doesn't have his jacket on. Like, where's Wally? We know who Subaru is. There's a point where I'm like, okay, he can take off the jacket while training and then put it back on. I just, <laughs> I also wonder how that, that outfit is so durable as well. Because my God, that. More, yeah, the jacket and the shoes, bro. I'd expect those outfits to like start falling apart. Maybe there's some sort of magic uh, skills that you can use to like make sure your clothing is like perfectly intact. But it is surprising because like if we get if the jacket or the shoes, right, it's a signature clothing. They don't make it like here anymore. Maybe you could find a custom tailor to try to figure out how to exactly match, you know, the neat jacket style. But it's like Hulk pants at this point. Outfit is very, very doable. So durable. So there are two things I want to talk about. Schrodinger slip. You hear him right there? Ready? ...as well, because, my god, that outfit is very, very doable, so... Very, very doable. Uh, uh, sorry, durable. This dude just spent the first almost two minutes of the video yapping about Subaru's jacket and how sweaty he can get. He just wanted to strip down. Then he slips out at the end saying, doable. You want to tell me something? <laughs> You, you, you want to tell me something? You, you can go my head. You can come out of the closet if you want. Durable. So there are two things I want to talk about. Okay. The first one is Beatrice and Subaru's relationship. Mm. I find their relationship to be very cute and innocent. I see it as a brother-sister duo combo. I know some people have kind of nitpicked at that and gone, oh, well, actually. No, it does feel like a brother sister. Yeah, they they do get, they they do get along very well, and spirits have no actual affection or love, right? Like romantic love. Beatrice loves Subaru, and Subaru loves Beatrice, but there is no romance like you know Amelia Subaru. It's just all kind of like platonic love. They love each other. Siblingship. I think it's a good example. It's more like a father and daughter relationship. I find that weird personally myself. Daddy daughter. Like tomato tomato. It's like same difference. <laughs> Who cares? I just personally like the brother-sister duo combo because it feels a little bit more innocent and it just feels like, yeah, they're like kind of like... 
innocent because if we went daddy daughter route yeah. even though beatrice is a different age because of who she is and being a spirit it just kind of feels like they're like you know she's a younger sister he's an older brother he dotes on her and you know gives her all the attention and then she kind of comes in and goes oh look am i not the cutest little sister kind of thing true in, epi or in that episode the yukata the first one I just think it's a much more innocent kind of mindset to have, even though some people will do the whole Oni oh, Chan kind of thing. I'm like, I get that, but I just prefer that mindset. Stick to Petra. You want to say that Oni Chan shit? Stick to Petra. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you pick either. I, I saw some people like really nitpicking it, like going, well, actually, it's like, no, I don't care. You, you, go, go to the corner, time out for you. But. I don't see anything wrong with their relationship. I've seen some people try to push that, that there's some like weird relationship going on with Subaru and Beatrice. I'm like, no, no. He's just a very caring individual. He really wants to kind of make her life better and make her life more vibrant and more colorful and not be locked away in a library and miserable and Agreed. lonely. And especially from the first episode, she was very bitter and angry and kind of didn't like him. And second the first season that is and then the second season their relationship developed a lot and now you've got the third season which is like the continuation that there's kind of the building on that already good relationship so i personally really like that chemistry i do not see anything weird in it and i feel like people are kind of more projecting when they see something weird in that the next thing i want to talk about is the movie length episode and why i do believe movie length episodes bruh most you fail you I, I fucking bait it i just listened to almost four minute 11 minute video almost four minutes of it is just super sweating jacket beatrice subaru weird shit but now here's the actual part mostly filler failing to understand story pacing and reason give me the video that i clicked on for please don't bait me for some animes is needed and some don't i I've seen a lot of comments of people being like, oh, more anime should do movie-length episodes. And I'm like, not every anime needs to do it. When you've got stuff like Fey Ran or Free Ran, you've got ReZero, even other series starting with M, having the T in there, I know. It's, 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 it's the name that shall not be named in the community. What happened? Why is Mushoku Tensei? He's got like a... I, I, I guess it's because he got ousted for being like a Mushoku Tensei enjoy because he does have a profile picture for Eris. But there are a multitude of animes that I do believe can benefit from a movie link type episode. Exactly. And what are these type of episodes? It's these type of episodes that's based on the source material where the source material is so deep and vast, right? Extensive exposition and dialogue from different characters, different setup that just truly goes to show how grand of an of, of like a series it is. And not every anime is like that. Some anime is like, you don't need to do movie, uh, movie uh, length premiere. It's a little bit excessive, right? For example, like, this is maybe not the best example, but do you remember Demon Slayer season five, uh, the Hashira training? You know how they made that movie into a fucking eight episode fucking season? There is no need to do that. They milk so much shit out. There is literally nothing in the source material that could have been fleshed out more. You're just milking a dry cow at this point. At, at, the, at the very least, the anime original, you know, Hashira scenes were cool. And then, you know, the finale of season five for um, the Hashira training arc, it was actually so fucking peak where I'm willing to just like ignore all the different shit episodes beforehand. It they all looked good, but it's just like, what the hell are we doing? Throwing fucking 10 paper planes. 20 maybe but yeah only the shows that actually has extensive lore background setup i think they can make use of premiere length you know releases to fully make the hardcore audience just immersed and appreciate the story more but here comes the problem right because the average retard watching this stuff only wants to hype fight stuff they see 90 minute release they're thinking it's going to be 90 minutes of fighting turns out it's not it's only like you know it's more like you know 80 minutes of fucking talking and then like and then five minutes extra at the end is just like the serious stuff and you're never going to convince the average monkey again to like appreciate this. Remember the example I always give you, right? The example is this. You are a human being with hopefully some fucking intellect that can override the animal instinct. You are given a steak and so is a dog. A dog is going to inhale that steak immediately because they have no just, you know, intellect to basically tell them that we should slowly appreciate this with each bite and savor every moment. The average consumer is that dog inhaling that steak. They can never appreciate something bigger than what they want because they just want the good shit. They just, they're just brain dead. They just want clips. They want the hype shit. 
But it's it's just so sad because if you could truly just take a step back and appreciate the show for what it is, you would have way more like entertainment. You would get way more out of ReZero. I think that everyone, like most people just watching this show, they're getting like less than 50 percent. Like what I mean by that is if you truly know everything about this show, if you truly immerse and engrossed into the world of ReZero, you're going to find this 90 minutes, you know, episode to be so fulfilling, so much extra lore. For me, I loved how they did the whole background setup of what happened throughout the past year. Ulto gave a recap of what's going on across the world. Stuff like that I love so much because it shows you how expansive the world is and how other nations are suddenly hearing the heroisms of Natsuki Subaru and the Amelia camp. Shit like this is why I love in One Piece where at the end of each arc you beat like a warlord or Yonko. Something huge happens and the world reacts to the news and it's just so amazing world building but to a lot of people they don't see it that way they just see it as filler recap why are we mentioning old you know scenes can we just get with the fight and you will never convince that audience to change their mindset and it is what it is but if you're looking at some like normal rom-com anime i'm just like no it doesn't need a movie length episode but reason it does and it's simple why is so many layers to the world so mm. many like complex things going on and it's a deep deep bucket of lore and exposition that truly does deserve a 90 minute release it's not overly complex but there is some complexity to it where you've got a lot of political powers you've got a lot of characters you've got a lot of world building a lot of character dynamics so you've got the individual characters and what they're doing but then the characters and how they mesh together and i feel like the first episode did a great job at building all that up without it feeling too overwhelming, but I can understand why it could feel a little bit overwhelming. For me, I feel like it's one of those where you could watch twice and you get a little bit of extra information because there's a lot of- I watched this shit like three times extra by myself, bro. I did. I sat back and just truly appreciated the all the exposition dropped more and more and it just got even better. Like at certain points where characters are kind of having conversations, you're like, okay, there's some interesting like layers to this and you kind of want to sit there and absorb it all so you kind of want to go for it bit by bit so you watch it the first time like normal then you go for it the second time and you kind of like go for it a little bit more analytically and i think that's good i think one of the things it also does really well is it doesn't excessive recap i hate excessive recapping because in my mind if you need to remember what the series is about go re-watch the previous seasons or watch an that's anime's I video i know some people use the excuse oh i don't have time to do that I kind of question that when most of these people that say that they don't have time to re-watch animes and they spend six hours a day on, like, social media. It's just stupid people that doesn't know how to manage time. Telling you that they don't have time to re-watch an anime. It feels more like you've just got a short attention. They just don't want to watch it. They have short attention span. Again, it's just the average monkey consumer. And you can never change them. And that's the thing I just, like, and, and, and... At the end of the day, who am I to gatekeep? I gatekeep like this because I want you, the audience, to get a better experience out of the show that you're watching. You could watch a show just distracted, not paying attention, and get maybe like 30-40% out of it, and that's it. Or you could watch the show fully fucking locked in and engaged, and constantly think about what's happening on the screen and try to theorize yourself. And you're going to get like way more out of it, like 80%, 90% of the actual show. And at the end of the day, if you're fine with that 30 to 40% experience and you're happy about it, be you, I guess, right? Like who am I to judge how you're going to live? But I just feel like it's just an unoptimal way of consuming media. If you're here for fun, if you truly do love this show, wouldn't you want the best way to experience it? The best experience for me, in my opinion, is being actively engaged rather than passively sitting back and just like halfway just thinking what's gonna, what am I gonna eat for dinner, who am I gonna hang out, and just looking through my phone, just scrolling, oh, is a fight scene gonna happen? No fight scene, I'm just distracted, I'm gonna play some games. It's like, you are wasting your own time. But, again, who am I to judge a person on how they perceive entertainment? I just hope that, I just, at the end of the day, I just want everyone to experience the shit that I love to the degree that I love, but most people will never do that because most people are just brain rotted, just short form content consuming retards. Span and you can't handle rewatching something, so you have to watch something new every time. So I don't believe that argument nine times out of ten because someone that doesn't have the time to rewatch something generally isn't spending time on social media. Telling 
It's not that they don't have time, it's that they don't want to, they can't be bothered to. They mean that they can't rewatch things, especially in videos. So that's just how I see it. And I just like the fact, like I said, ReZero doesn't overly excessively recap. It gives enough explanation, enough recapping. The recap that was given through Otto in the carriage and then what happened, um, I think there was another extra recap, right? That happened maybe during the whole, like the, the morning uh, meeting with Anastasia. It's an amazing way of handling two birds and one stone, right? The one stone basically means like through a simple recap, seemingly recap moment, not only do you remind people, yeah, the Liliana Glaze one, that's the one, that's the one, that's the second example. Not only are you reminding the viewers and the audience what happened in season one and two, but to give the, like, the implication, other people are aware of these specific feats, right? The white whale subjugation, Petrigus Romani Conti, Got, uh, subjugated, right? White Rabbit dealt with shit like this. And it's not only a recap, but just like sets the stage of how people are perceiving Natsuki Subaru. Time after time in episode one, even Wilhelm mentions it. I don't think you truly understand how this world perceives you, Subaru. You are a hero. Been to explain the current situation in the past and then add layers to the current like development going on. And so I like that. I like how it goes about that. There are some animes out there that I feel like they use recapping as a way to fill episodes up so they can... Yes, those animes, there's no depth or complexity that actually needs those kind of recaps. It's just padding extra watch time because the animation studios have no fucking budget because the producers and the studios all just want to min-max and give a shitty fucking product, which is not a passion of love. Filler watch time, filler animation. Cut on animation time. Uh, budgeting it's it's all those kind of things of being like oh we have x amount of episodes no i wouldn't i wouldn't say index recaps are that egregious index recaps are very quick it touches on the main points of the previous episode and it's like done within like a minute less than a minute one piece on the other hand that's right wealth power fame I left it there all in. I know, old man! This is my 500th episode! You don't need to fucking tell me this! But Toei Animation, right? They gotta pad their watch time, and they don't actually have anything to actually farm because they have limited amount of fucking source material to cover, so they're gonna stretch out as much as they can. But we wanna, like, make 20% of it just excessive recapping, and I'm... Yeah, 20% recap. Next 10% is the opening. Like, 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 that's the what's the one piece special bro like the first five fucking minutes is all recap then you have as long as fucking opening then you have maybe like seven eight minutes of actual content then it's ending that's it it can range between like five to twenty percent some you know old power showmans used to do that excessively where like you'd have a 20 minute or 25 minute episode and like 10 minutes of it is just recapping but Certain animes that I've watched recently do too much recapping, and they do it in a. They own, the only reason why I'm sorry that they do the recapping is to pad the episodes out so yes. they can turn a, a t 23 minutes and 40 seconds standard duration of what an anime episode should be. They're just fucking clocking in and padding the fucking watch time. Two core season into two, three, four episodes of just recapping. And I'm like, yeah. no, we don't need that. Don't treat the audience like they're stupid. And I think one of the problems... <laughs> but the audience is stupid. <laughs> That's the best part. Myself included. I don't think that I'm like this supreme intellect chosen one. The perfect human out of the white room. I'm a Koji. That's totally me. It's not me. But I think that I do my due diligence and I'm very aware of my limitations. And I can kind of see at a grander scale of different types of audiences due to the nature of content creation. The hardcore and the casual, right? I definitely do understand this better than most people because I'm literally doing this every fucking day. This is that that gets worshipped because communities get too defensive. And that is an issue with the anime community is too many anime communities are too defensive about their favorite series and can't handle any constructive criticism. I think that there is a place and time for being defensive. And there's also a time and place to actually understand criticism. Sometimes not, not all criticism is actually criticism. Some people are just fucking hating for no reasons and people defend, right? And in the same, in, and, and then vice versa, there may be actually valid criticism, but people will defend no matter what and glaze because they felt like other people have been making shitty ass criticism, right? Both sides of the spectrum can be wrong in this instance. And he can say, well, you kind of, you know, gushing over ReZero, but I'm like, oh, I've criticized ReZero before. I always balance my reviews with positives and negatives.
but I just think excessive recapping does not help. It treats the audience like they're idiots. You use recapping as a way to explain the current context of the conversation. Are we talking about... So, what is this right now? We were talking about recaps being bad in animes, but is the criticism right now that episode 1 was all unnecessary recap and that the anime community is getting defensive that episode 1 wasn't recap? What's the talking point right now? Conversations. Like, for example, if Subaru is having a conversation with a character and they're needing to talk about the current situation that it is a continuation from a past event, they might give a, a little bit of a quick dot and point note of, oh yeah, that event from X, Y, and Z. Like, for example, Rem, when she's you know asleep and they kind of bring up the past of her relationship a little bit and then what led to her being in that situation. It doesn't need to be five minutes long of recapping. It can be... 10 seconds maybe a little bit okay. more but when you blow it out to five minutes it's just to me it feels like i'm confused was there actually five minutes of recap for rem shit that he's critic criticizing about i am actually confused on like what we're talking about right now because so far we've been talking about how recaps are bad for a certain anime anime community it's too defensive and now we're giving reason examples so are you mad at episode one or i i, I don't know what we're doing right now like you're treating the audience like they're idiots and at that point i'm like okay well then go re-watch the previous seasons all episodes that's just how i see it okay i know it's a very controversial opinion but i do feel like some content creators knee-jerk defend it because they're too scared that their audience will get angry at them for dare being critical of something they're no i call you fucking retard monkeys if i want to i do whatever the fuck i want there's no way i will ever bend down to a bunch of fucking loser weebs, bro. That's gonna talk shit from the peanut gallery. I will always say what's on my mind. But I am right now very confused on what are we, what are we even talking about? Is he mad that ReZero had a long recap? Are we using ReZero as a random fucking example? Even though it never happened, we're trying to basically give an example of when, you know, recaps can happen and community can be bad. Like, we're, like, there is, like, I am, I am genuinely so fucking confused right now. This tangent that we're going off of, like, is this an exact example or, or, or what's going on? The difference between me and them is I do not let my audience dictate my opinion. I'm open to the discussion and open to having a diff changing my opinion, but I'm not going to be bullied into having an opinion all because I want to please a community. ReZero is one of those. I feel like this video is him making a statement to his audience and the haters on Twitter right now. This feels very personally charged. He did make an eight minute video on Twitter about death threats happening, which should never fucking happen. Absolutely, that's horrendous shit. But now I'm realizing that this is like a personal fucking like vendetta video against those Twitter losers, I think. Subaru, take your tracksuit off. I want to see those gains. Otherwise, okay. zero out of 10. Subaru needs to flex. So I love, absolutely love the movie length episode. Okay. Though, as far as criticisms go, I could understand if some people felt that they felt overwhelmed because there's a lot of stuff going on. But the comments of ReZero Season 3 movie length premiere feels like mostly filler, which I uh, had been linked to not filler. That. I think that's just rubbish. It's not filler. You saying that that's filler is just absolute rubbish. That's just you saying. Here's the thing about ReZero in specific. I think that ReZero is an anime that many people don't truly understand. I don't think that ReZero is a gigabrain anime. I don't think it's one of the, like, you need to be, like, such a smart person to understand it. But at the same time, you need to be very, like, um, on guard. You need to really analyze a lot to truly understand the story and the theme that it's trying to tell you. A lot of people have a misunderstanding and they don't even know the show. And then they call it mid because... They call the shit like this filler because they have no clue about how these different characterization moments in episode one adds to the story, right? They're unaware of the plot point. They're confused on where the story is going. They're expecting a fight. They see exposition happening. They're completely unaware that there's setup happening, foreshadowing, book closes, different things all just like, you know, coming full circle because they're brain dead. And then they go on to say it's filler, that it's mid. And again, everything stems down to the average intelligence of the average consumer. It's just, just, just to remember, people are very fucking stupid. I am also very stupid. But think about how dumb the average person is. 
then realize that half of them are even dumber than that. The average media literacy <laughs> does not exist in most people watching ReZero. Then they get mad and make some dumb takes online because they didn't understand a story. Then you have actual ReZero enthusiasts that goes on and, you know, shit on them. It's just, what are you going to do? You're not going to change their minds. In that for clicks. Because they did very minimal recapping and they did a lot of world building, a lot of character building, a lot of stuff was going on in those episodes. They jammed it with some good stuff. And I really loved it. I loved the pacing, but I do feel like it's one of those where I can understand that you may need to watch it twice to really, even a third time, to really absorb all of what's going on because there is a lot of stuff that is happening in that episode. That it's, it's, it's perspective. Like, I can understand why some. I myself watched it fine first time. I might watch it a second time just to get a kind of a grasp. But I generally watch a lot of animes multiple times just to kind of see if I missed anything. And just because I enjoy watching some animes multiple times. And ReZero is one of those. But I'm just saying that I understand if it can feel a little bit too much. Which I'm just saying, rewatch it again. Skill issue. <laughs> Fucking skill issue. And here's the best part. You can't just say skill issue to a bunch of monkeys that thinks that this is filler. They're not going to correct themselves. How do you compel an audience that's misguided and completely change the way that they consume media? It's hard. You can't. You could never convince someone else to just be like, you, bro, you got to sit down and really lock in and just like study the anime. They won't. They're here to just have fun and just like be, get a shallow experience. And if that's what you want, so be it. And maybe we don't have to try to make other people see in our perspectives. We can enjoy ReZero by being hardcore and being really enthusiastic about it. And other people can enjoy it by just getting a shallow experience. And maybe some of them will be compelled by the story to the point where they're going to seek out more in-depth commentary and analysis. And then at that point, maybe they can be converted. But at the end of the day, monkeys will be monkeys and you can't do anything about it. Don't feel ashamed. Don't be bullied into feeling bad that, you know, you need to watch something twice just because there's a lot of stuff going on. And maybe you got a little bit distracted at one point, you know, cat or a dog or a squirrel or a bird or whatever flies around. You're like, ooh, so you need to rewatch it. So absolutely love the episode. Love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What would you rate Amelia's monoculars? 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. You already know. Please go give Mr. Spirit a like on the video. Check the video. Check this channel out if you haven't. Have to, this, this video was a fucking ride, that's for sure. I think he really wants to see Subaru take off his jacket, though, and show those bulging, glistening, sweaty muscles, bro. That doable part, I will not let that go. That was a Schrodinger's fucking slip, bro. That right there, when he slipped by saying, Subaru looks definitely doable, <coughs> durable, mm? Mm? 